Okay, today I might just record a couple of thoughts about Dose in a Day, Pink Book, Group 1, Exercise 3, which is called Bouncing a Ball with Right Hand. Now, this is one of those really rich and useful exercises. So I might just spend a bit of time with it. And let's get at it. So this is what we're going to be working with, the right hand. Okay, so at the very end of the day, I think the exercise should sound and look like this. Three, four. And there's a lot of there's a lot involved in there. Now, uh, first of all, one of the conditions, one of the things that has to happen, has to happen, is that your wrist, your wrist is relaxed and flexible and responsive. See, uh, one of the things that I insist a lot is that we allow this wrist to be to be your tool. It's, it's, it's a miraculous articulation as to the range of movements that the wrist can do, right? And, and I see way too many people coming to me uh, not having done technique with a stiff wrist. And it's then a lot of work to get them to loosen up. So this exercise is super important because it will, it will educate your wrist and forearm to relax and to be responsive and reactive to what the music needs. So first of all, I think the exercise should be, should be started with a floppy hand, with a floppy hand, touching the keys, the fingertips, are, the fingertips are touching the keys and then you drop. On the first note of the slur, you drop and you allow the wrist to drop. On the second note of the slur, which is the staccato, you lightly bounce off and look what happens to, to the hand, it relaxes again. It bounces off and relaxes again. By, by virtue of this finger kind of gripping, hooking on the staccato. And then on beat three, you drop again. That's in short what the exercise is. You have that happening twice, then on beat three, uh, on bar three, you have a, a slightly different bar where you have drop, off, drop, off, the last bar, in the last bar you drop for the last time. There is a lot in that. There is a lot involved in that. And you can actually break it down into a couple of separate exercises. But let me show you just one last time what I think the exercise should sound and look like. Starting from a floppy hand, wrist slightly elevated, with the wrist slightly elevated, Floppy hands, this is relaxed. So from a slightly elevated wrist position, all fingertips touching the keys, drop your weight, allow the wrist to drop, firm up, finger one, play the key. And allow the wrist to drop. Second note, three, four. So, let's break it down now. You can break down that exercise into two main techniques. One is the one where you drop. So, let's practice that. Let's have a look at that. From wrist slightly elevated, so it's charged with gravity now, with the potential energy of gravity, ready to drop, all fingers relaxed, floppy hand, floppy hand, all fingers 
touching the keys, you will drop and you will only firm up finger one and allow the wrist to drop. Come up again, the finger is now relaxed again, like all the others. Drop and come up and release the key. So you will drop, you firm up this finger as you do. The key will be played, but the, the wrist will be allowed to drop. Not too much, but just enough. And then you come up, as you come up, gently with the wrist, you will also release the key, because this relaxes again, becomes inert again. So, with the drop, this becomes firm. With the release and rising of the wrist, you also release the key. Drop, release. Drop, release. Drop, release. Drop, release. Drop, release. Drop, release. See, at the moment of drop, the finger firms up and the wrist is allowed to drop more. What I see sometimes is people stiffening the whole thing up. You see, they, 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 they firm up not just the finger, but they firm up the whole, um, the whole um, equipment here. And so they become unable to to drop the wrist because this is now stiff so loosen up the wrist so this is half of the exercise if you want you can practice just from a slightly elevated wrist you can practice just the drop and the release All it takes is to firm that up as you need it and then release and relax again. The second exercise that you can do, you can do two exercises with the next movement, which is this, right? That, that movement, that. You can do two exercises with that. I remember seeing an exercise on YouTube, I can't find it again, where there was one guy doing something like this. And if you know which one it is, send me the link, please, because I thought it was very useful. So, from a flat hand, this is flat, yeah? From a flat hand, finger two. Finger two will slide back, just keep in touch with the keep in touch with the surface of the key. Keep in touch with the surface of the key and pull back, creep back your finger too, and let the other fingers tag along. You see, I'm not doing this with all fingers. I'm not doing this with all the fingers. I'm only doing this with finger two. And let the other fingers tag along and reconstitute your um, default hand. From a flat hand. Pull back finger two, pull back finger two and let the other finger tag along and reconstitute your default hand shape. This one. See? Now my finger four is on the black key, that's okay. So from a flat hand, just slide gently, no pressure whatsoever, just slide gently and feel, feel finger two just sliding on the surface of the key and reconstitute your 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 default hand shape there second part of this exercise from a flat hand now finger two will grip the key actually you see and i want you to feel it right here that's what i want you to feel the the there underneath there Right here, I want you to feel the energies to come together. Look what happens to the rest of the wrist and the arm. The 
the energy of da. It's it's helping me rise in the wrist and forearm. So from a flat hand, let's see if I can go slow. From a flat hand, grip on the D and reconstitute your default hand position. Again, look, these three fingers here are inert, doing nothing. There, from a flat hand. Now you're putting more energy into the key, so you should feel it here. You're putting more energy than this. There is no energy, there is almost no energy going into the key as you do this, but there is more energy now going into the key, of course, as you do that. You have to firm up this finger now. You firm this finger up, otherwise you can't press the key and you have to put some energy into the key. And then you can also do from a flat hand, da. See, you put more energy into the key and so your, your, wrist, your wrist kind of almost passively bounces back up. And you recognize that? That's the starting place for that. So, you can, from a flat hand, you can do this, reconstitute your, your default hand shape. From a flat hand then, you can put more energy into the D, you can grip on the key, reconstitute your default hand shape, and hold on to the D. From a flat hand, you can do a staccato and look what happens then. My wrist is ready to drop again. Four. Yeah. You put all those techniques together and you have three, four. Now what happens in between bars is that you have to raise your wrist again, ready to drop. So one, two, three, four, and you can raise your wrist on the end or you can raise your wrist on the whole of beat four. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah, because you, you need, at the end of bar one and two, you need to raise your wrist. So don't feel that you have to stay down here for the entirety of beat four. You'll need to, you'll need to release the note if you want to drop again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You see how I come back up on beat four? If I don't, I am not in a position to be able to drop again. A lot of thoughts, a lot of detail, I know. But how much detail is too much detail? Hmm? In ancient Greek, I think the word technique means pertaining to the art or something to that effect. So, without technique, you have no tool to bring out the art. Thanks for watching.